Hi everyone, welcome to New Tech. My name's Miles and thanks for watching. In today's video, we're gonna be starting the build on the new CNC table, so let's go. So if you watched my previous video, I wasn't happy about the CNC table that I had built. So in today's video, I'm gonna be replacing the entire table underneath and making something a lot more rigid and stronger so I don't have any of the problems that I have today with uh, losing um, height in the scoreboard in places and also the jungle of cords underneath. So in today's video, we're going to be creating a brand new uh, CNC table, but there's three things that I wanted to include in it. The first thing was the safety reasons. So having things um, nearby that if I need to stop something, I can. The second thing was ease of access. So having the end mills and my control panel uh, near me that I can um, easily reach or access. And then the third last thing was something to do with the design. I wanted to create something quite spacey and a bit nostalgic of my youth. So stay tuned and let's get started with the build. All right, to get started with, I wanted something super rigid for the internal frame of the machine. Uh, this is the design that I came up with in Fusion 360. And you can see here that some of my right angles are missing. Now that was purposely done so I could fit some type of uh, drawer that could move in and out with any obstruction. But I just wasn't really happy with this original design. Everything was there, but it didn't look the way that I wanted to. So this is the design I ended up coming up with. And the, the main reason I wanted to go down this path is it certainly reminded me of something of my youth, you know, that kind of red retro space age design and uh, I was really liking it so I've, I've ended up um, going with this design. Now for the internal part I used a 30 millimeter uh, bar now this is extremely strong and I ended up actually teaching myself how to weld then spray painting it black to finish with. Then I went on to actually creating the uh, the panels themselves. So this is uh, designing the, the front panel of the machine. You can see here that the machine's going through and just uh, carving into about five millimeters of that front layer. Now that's using a nine millimeter MDF, which will then be mounted onto the front of the machine. The front of the machine was probably the most challenging part of the overall build. You can see here that the front of the machine has a curved surface to the front of it. Now I intended to learn how to bend plywood, I uh, wasn't too sure so I wanted to try a couple of techniques and, and I love experimenting with new ideas. So in this uh, video you can see that I'm showing you how to model this up and prepare it for bending. Now the only way that I could figure out how to do it on Fusion 360 was to use the sheet metal tab at the top so I had to recreate the profile of the front of the the curved surface here and then just using the front contour because that was the longest part of the surface I was able to create a flange from the the contours that projected from that original surface now the problem was is that I didn't have much flexibility over the the thickness of this material but that's okay because I'm only after the profile itself and then using the original surface that it was uh, created from I was able to project that to a new surface and with this surface I was able to cut the the steel away or the sheet metal to create a very similar uh, form to what I started with and using that projected surface I was able to uh, cut away um, using the intersect tool, uh, the the sheet metal, and uh, being able to replicate that original design. So I was, I was really happy with the design so far and this outcome. So with the sheet metal, you can actually unfold the sheet metal. Um, I'm not too sure if you can do this any other way, but this is the only way I figured out how to do it through Fusion 360. So this is the part that I really love about the, the system is that you can unfold that shape so it's flat and prepare it for CNC cutting. And you can see now that I'm using that uh, the profile that that sheet metal created to create my six millimeter plywood um, surface to build from. Now there's a couple of different ways that you can go about bending this. However, I decided to create channels 
in the, the original folds of this uh, projected piece. And you can see that on the sheet metal, it actually has those guides left from where it uh, remembered that it was uh, last folded. And so using those guides was a really easy way to know whereabouts to put these channels in to kind of create a weak spot and uh, make it much easier to bend later on. So you can see here that I've just created a line and using the pattern tool that I was able to repeat that pattern over and over again. However, you can see that I've made a slight issue down here because that line didn't go all the way through to the edge of the, uh, the plywood. So I'm just drawing that in manually. And the next part was that I can uh, then use those lines to extrude. I probably should have put one more line in there so it's an even extrusion. Now, it obviously depends on what uh, end mill that you want to use to cut it out. So I think I ended up using a three millimeter. And I also had the option of using the trace tool paths, using those lines instead to trace through the material. Here you can see that I'm using double-sided tape to hold down the ply. This is just to ensure that the center part of the ply uh, was able to keep level with the table, even though that I was using the hold down bolts around the outside of the ply. Uh, you can see it's going in through doing the channels at the moment with the three millimeter end mill. And I'm actually using the trace tool path in this one, then going around the outside to create the outer contour of the, the bent ply front surface. I did have some issues with uh, the, the channels here, you can see. On the edges where the, the tool path do the final outer contour, on the way through it actually did weaken these channels a little bit, but I'm not too worried about it because I'm actually gonna use some builder's bog later on to come back through and harden these channels up. Um, however, I was mainly after just a thinner piece of ply that I was able to bend. The only issue is with this ply, because it's marine ply, I did actually find that it was hard to bend because of the, the, the glue that was used to create this ply with, it's quite a stiff glue. And so bending it without any application of water or heat, um, it was just impossible and it was certainly going to crack. So I tried a couple of different ways on how to um, kind of steam it without putting it in like a steam oven or something because I didn't have one available. I tried the just squirting some water on the, the ply and then going over with the, the hot air gun, but that wasn't as successful. However, using this other technique with the iron worked really, really well with this technique. So just spraying it first of all with some, some water to create extra um, steam and then going over with the, the iron, you can see that that um, bent really easily. And it was like that for a couple of minutes until it uh, cooled down again. I realized at this point that uh, I didn't know how to hold it down. So I decided then to create these little brackets. Now I created this through the model itself. So I was able to um, cut out the exact angles that I needed for each bend, which I could then squish between some clamps. You can see here that that actually worked really, really well. Um, I think in the future, if I was to do this, I'd probably create just really long kind of um, guides for the, the bends to go through. However, I was really happy with the outcome. I can see just there at the bottom of the video on one corner, I did get some slight angles out, but I knew that I could fix that later on. Um, with some uh, sandpaper and just to kind of grind that area down. Even after a lot of the issues that I had with bending the ply, I found that it was actually ended up being a bit of a benefit in the end because uh, the marine ply, the, the glue was so strong with inside the, the ply that once I released those clamps that actually held its form really, really well. Uh, this video here, you can see that I'm cutting the top of the, the control center for the table and uh, I wanted to give it some type of identity. So I've, I'm using the engraved toolpath here from Fusion 360 and I've just called the machine WB1510 uh, to kind of help identify the, the machine that uh, is running on top. And this part of the video, you can see that the machine's going through and cutting the areas that the buttons will be in later on. I'll go a lot into the buttons uh, in the next episode. This part of the, the video, it's actually cutting out like a, 
a, a guide rail for the the installation of the the curved ply so you can see here i've already put the guide rail down underneath the the top surface and that made it really easy to apply the ply to the outside of that um, that spine in a way there was still some areas where it had to be heated and reformed because it wasn't perfect when i did it by hand but you can see here it actually worked really really nicely and there's probably i should have put some pressure pushing down on it as well i didn't think of it at the time you can see at the bottom there where it's on the MDF that there's a slight gap, but that was okay because I could fit it, uh, fix that later on with the uh, with the putty. As this was one of my first times with doing anything like this in the project, I had to use a lot of like builder's bog to kind of uh, fix any issues and kind of reinforce these uh, weak areas that I had made on the machine to bend. It was uh, really easy to apply and in the end it, it actually worked out really nicely uh, to use the builder's bog. And one of the things that uh, uh, I'll probably change for next time if I was to build another table was to try and reduce the amount of filler that I had to use but you know that's uh, understandable on a project like this where it might be your first time doing something where you might have a lot of gaps so any kind of filler or or builder's bog certainly came um, handy and was certainly one of my friends on the way through this build can see I've just test fit the uh, the e-stop making sure that that did fit um, for tolerances um, it was also kind of a bit of fun just to see uh, what it's kind of look like after mounting the front panel I put in some moldings on the side of the uh, the corners there and uh, that was just to help it get that perfect uh, kind of curve and you can see that I've uh, bogged up a lot of those holes there that I I had to fix those moldings to the the metal frame underneath and then there was a lot of sanding This is the part that I was really looking forward to. So I'm installing the, the, the top of the control center onto the front of the machine. It certainly gave me the motivation to fire ahead now that the machine is starting to look something like the, uh, the 3D rendering that I had originally come up with. This uh, front control panel, you can see that it's really nicely flush with the, uh, the MDF panel underneath. I did have to do a lot of sanding to get that angle down because uh, when I did cut it, it had a funny angle on it. So after I did uh, stick this down, I then went ahead and used a whole lot of builder's bog to blend those corners in. Um, and unfortunately that means that there was a whole lot of sanding involved. So this is a, a really quick sample of, uh, of parts of it that I had to sand and there was constant sanding and then um, layering some more uh, filler on top and then more sanding to blend that in really well but it was certainly worth it and uh, you see the final uh, end product there. I, I really like the look of this in timber. If I did have another chance down the track I certainly would uh, consider doing something just in timber because it looked beautiful. And time to do the rear panel now. In this part, you can see that it's doing my sign off, my signature, and it just says designed by M. Newton. I thought, uh, what better way to sign it than just to do a, uh, a carve in the back of it, right next to where the power sockets are. So you can see it's also cutting out the, the channels for the fans. So in this uh, build, I've got fans at the front and the back of the machine to make sure that there's a consistent airflow. So I'm just putting the rest of the mouldings onto the machine and I can see here that I made a really big mistake for putting that first part down um, and then surprise surprise we'll have to put some more builders bog so it certainly became my friend through this build And this part is just cutting out the, the curved brackets for the corners to get that circular shape in the overall uh, side of the machine. I was going through and pre-drilling those holes so I didn't split any of the MDF as I fixed it to the main frame. So it's really amazing what you do learn when you do a project like this and uh, certainly 
gives you some really great ideas for future projects. I probably would change my mind about how I was to apply the side panels and uh, cut them out of one single sheet then rather doing them in separate parts. However, this time round, it, it turned out pretty well overall. I'm just laying down the primer at the moment on the outer part of the machine. I found that this was a great way to cut the MDFs to stop it swelling or, or taking on any moisture and using a lot of spray paint to get a, a really nice finish there. You can see I'm just going over the top of it with uh, the final white gloss finish ready for the installation of the inside panels. Here is where the project kind of took another pathway. So I went through and I was starting to cut the drawer for the machine and I was trying to be really organized by labeling each panel really nicely and then going through and boring all the holes that I needed for connections for the, the panels on the inside of the drawer. However, um, something happened to my spindle this time. I'm not really sure what it was, if the spindle had just expired or, or, or something happened, but the spindle just stopped working. Um, and then I had some issues with, uh, with some heat in it and then it just totally broke. So unfortunately I was out of a spindle for a while until I was able to purchase a new one. And that was okay because uh, you know I could learn some new skills. And you can see here that I'm just using a texture to to mark out the the panels um, where they should have been cut. And I was just going to do it by hand. So I'm going to leave you with this next montage of me cutting everything out by hand and doing what the CNC machine probably should have done. But it just took me a lot more time to do it and probably not as precise. So enjoy this next part. I'll be back soon. certainly did take a lot of time to uh, get this far without using the CNC machine but I certainly learned a lot in the process. I've just put a, a sample area where I'm just going to lie my tools and my end mills um, in this section but that will change later on. So that's all I've got for today guys. Um, in the next video I'm going to dive into the buttons that I'm, I'm creating it and all the electronics for the machine. Um, so please stay tuned and I'll certainly see you next time but uh, until then don't forget to subscribe and give a thumbs up. So I'll see you then and thanks for watching.